My name is Michelle Weiss and I'm the author of the book Long Life Learning, Preparing for Jobs That Don't Even Exist Yet. It's a good question. I think there are obviously some forward-leaning institutions that are trying to anticipate the changes to come, but I would say that the vast majority of institutions are not necessarily taking a really hard look at the demographic changes, the enrollment cliffs that are to come, to actually pivot to serving a more mature learner who's going to have to continuously return to education throughout their work lives. There are a, a variety of ways that universities can adapt. One is to think about shorter burst learning experiences, some more micro learning experiences. We generally tend to think about things in terms of a degree program, but sometimes someone just needs three or four skill sets or competencies, and where are they gonna get just precisely those skills? So thinking about more targeted, precise learning experiences. The other piece of this is if we want to face that uncertain world of work ahead with more confidence, we need to think about cultivating the best problem solvers we can. So we need to cultivate more problem-based learners, people who can really engage with real-world problem-solving skills and realizing that not every problem that we solve comes in a specific academic discipline. So we're not solving a problem in math or physics or anthropology, but that every problem we engage with in the world and in the workforce is trans or interdisciplinary. So how do we do that at scale for our learners? There's obviously the challenge of cost for many learners. There's also the most precious resource that we all have as humans is time. So how are we gonna take the time to skill up and prepare and remain relevant in the workforce? And again, that comes back to how do I get on demand exactly what I need precisely when I need it? and in the shortest amount of time, but in the deepest way possible, right? And so th this is something that we haven't solved for within our education system. Yeah, I th this, is the, this is the question that comes up the most, and it's, if for a while we kept hearing, oh, it's our STEM skills, right? Science, te technology, engineering, math. And then others were saying, no, it's our more human skills that are necessary. But the truth is it's kind of both and. It's this really interesting kind of hybrid nature of human plus technical skills. So as we think about a longer work life, we're gonna kind of think about stretching out that idea of a T-shaped learner. So sometimes we're gonna be broadening our human skills around emotional intelligence or systems thinking or, or creativity and curiosity. Other times we're gonna need some deep technological expertise or vertical expertise in cybersecurity or cloud computing or machine learning. We're gonna to need to know what these things are in order to have a chance at a good job in the future. So it's, a, it's this idea of both and or human plus technical skills. Yeah, this is a great question because when we think about the sort of critical liberal arts skills, that, those human skills that we need and that employers so desperately seek, we get that through an educational four-year experience or a university experience. The challenge then becomes how do we actually think about cultivating those human skills as we age, as we move through our work and learning experiences how are people going to actually build their skills in communication or empathy and emotional intelligence and systems thinking? We haven't actually figured out ways to practice these skills. I think we assume that they're innate within us as humans, but they actually require deep practice, right? We can't just take a LinkedIn learning class for one hour and build our emotional intelligence, right? We need to actually think about different kinds of scenario-based learnings or simulations where we can practice giving and taking uh, or receiving feedback or negotiation or these different kinds of skills that we all need to develop. We just haven't figured out the ways to cultivate those precise kinds of digital learning experiences for a whole range of learners.
Yeah, the pandemic really crystallized for me the challenge that we were already facing in the U.S. with 41 million Americans who were not making it and thriving in the labor market. It just really revealed all of the fundamental cracks in our infrastructure because we don't have great ways of taking people and helping them understand what transferable skills they have that they can use in a different industry or a different domain. And so um, it's funny because when I was writing my book, I turned in my draft of my book right when the pandemic hit. And at first I worried that I had to rewrite my book just given the changes that the pandemic was, was uh, forcing upon us. But what I realized actually was that all the pandemic did was raise these issues to the fore and made us understand that we cannot just kind of keep doing as we're doing. We can't just sort of maintain the status quo. We actually have to get to the business of building that lifelong learning infrastructure. Probably the most valuable learning experience I had was in college when I was showing a paper to my professor. And it was a 10-page paper. And I was just trying to see, was I on the right track? Was, was this something, I thought I was nearly done and I was kind of excited to, to share it with my professor. And he sat in his office and he read it in front of me. And then when he finally got to the 10th page, he circled the last paragraph and he said, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> and I thought, oh my gosh, you only thought the last paragraph of that 10 page paper was interesting. And to me, I was sort of crestfallen because I thought I have to rewrite this entire paper because the only nugget that was interesting was that final piece. But to me, it was actually ultimately the most important lesson I learned because nothing you write is golden. And that, and I used to be an English professor and I would teach my learners that they would always have to revise and revise. And for me, that's how actually I've learned how to think. I actually learn more when I actually write my way through it. And so it takes me a while to get there. And it's not, it's not a bad thing to actually go back and, and have to just take that little nugget and kind of move from there. To me, that was just sort of one of the most valuable learning experiences and humbling. Oh, it's, it's been phenomenal. I, I really just thank the, the sponsors and the, and the folks here who, who facilitated the entire event. And I've been actually learning a lot from the audience members. They've been coming to me and sharing different kinds of ideas and challenges that they're all facing. So I really enjoyed learning from them.